but yeah leveraging the power of being young like if you're young people want to help you and like i'm still yeah. experiencing it because i'm young but i'm even getting older i can see it you know kind of fading it's like people have expectations when you're a certain age and you've been you know they know i've been working for this person for two years or something it's like they have expectations mm-hmm. but when you're young people want to help and they want to help you out or they, they want to give you as much because if you get successful it's like and you're their mentor or they can like claim oh yeah it all started because of this that's powerful yeah it f- feeds your ego and it's also like you've got connection for them now you get access to his network or her network so yeah being young is it's a lot of fun especially take it i think a lot of people don't realize and by the time they're you know 25 30 35 40 whatever it is they'll be like oh damn i wish i'd take advantage <laughs> there's always things to leverage but like knowing what you can leverage when. So when you've, because one question actually that I've been asked a lot by people who are at university in particular is uh, they say, I don't have experience, but every job I'm going for asks for experience. Mm. How am I meant to get experience if I can't get experience to get the experience? You know, like it's sort of this catch I was going to answer for this as well. So do you want to hear my one? Yeah, yeah, let's go with yours first. All right, so I have two things. Uh, One is volunteering can be really, really good. Uh, And I've met people specifically who also want to work in the nonprofit space. And they're like, how do I get a nonprofit job? I'm like, volunteer. Volunteer is huge because usually nonprofits have a really good network. Mm. So they'll, if you can't get them, if they can't give you a job, they'll usually have a network of people who can help. Which is leveraging what we just spoke about. That's right. Um, The other one is just offer to do some stuff for free which is a little bit different to volunteering now i don't want to be too controversial because i know that there was the whole muffin break thing where you know we were talking about basically doing labor for free which is not at all what i mean Mm. but and this probably again applies to people that are maybe a bit more entrepreneurial inclined but like give people sort of like a taste of what you do so look i can do this example for you for free i mean i still do it working for free it's um it's super, super smart. If you have no experience and you need experience, you know, the trade is you work for free and you get experience. So you're not getting paid with money. But you get, so it's a, it's, it works for both ways. You know, the person's happy because I've got someone working for free and they're passionate and you're happy because you're getting experience. So a year later, you can actually go for that job that you wanted. That's and you've right. got, ref, you know, access to their network and they'll refer you if you did a good job, give you a, what's it called, recommendation. And that, that's the thing I would ask for. Like if I was going to do work for free, I would say like, look, my the reason i'm doing this like explain what the value is for mm. you because uh, people can get a bit suspicious as well like why are you doing this for free what yeah, do you, right. for me? If you, you know i think if you say look um the reason i want to do this for the next three months is because i want to get a good positive recommendation out of this and and a job yeah i want positive recommendation i want a job i want to want like you know, access to your network or just kind of learn from you exactly. and learn from you is a good one because that once again kind of feeds their ego it's like oh <laughs> But if they've got a big ego, which yeah, a lot of people do. <laughs> exactly. So in three months as well is good. You know, that's a good good amount of time. Yeah. I think and if you're still living at home, you've got no expenses, so you can do it for free versus when you move out and if you're you know, you've got rent to pay for and everything, then you probably can't just work for free. Or maybe you can only do it a day or two a week and you've got to be working part time to supplement for the money that you're not earning. Yeah. And that's because that's why it's like do it now while you're still at home. Do it now while you you know have no expenses yeah so it's super do you want to hear my yeah i do my advice i mean it's similar to yours basically i would say um driven like driven young it's the name of podcast Mm -hmm. if you go in with like driven and you're willing to work for less because you've got no take the the fact that you don't have experience means you get a lower paycheck which well they'll like that because it's like lower paycheck but show that you're really passionate and driven sounds like obvious or maybe it's not that practical advice but i did this when i was younger I was just out of high school and I went for a job that um, required 33 years of experience. I had zero and I went for it and then my mum helped me write, write the cover letter and I got the interview. The interview went really well and I was one of 400 or two of 400 that got to the next phase, which was just doing like a two-day trial. Wow. I didn't end up getting the job, but they were willing to hire me for um, you know $30,000 a year instead of 50 because I had no experience, but because I had the passion and the drive. I think a lot of people need to go in with that energy for an interview or somehow get that across in their cover letter or their resume. 
Yeah, I want to also make the point of saying, because this was something actually that came up when there was the, do you know the muffin break scandal thing yeah, we're yeah. talking about? Yeah, yeah. So what, do you I, just explain it though? Yeah, so basically uh, there was a Royal Commission into in the franchising sector. I don't know that much about the details because law is like not my area mm. at all. Uh, but the, uh, the head of Muffin Break basically turned around and said, you know, uh, oh, there's been this massive drop off in the last 10 years of young people offering to do work for free. Millennials are so entitled. Yeah. Now, there was a bunch of problems with that statement. Uh, I got to talk to Mitchell Dye uh, on um, the Pulse Radio about this, actually. And I was saying, like, one of the, the big issues with what that, that comment was, was one, the age of a millennial at the time was 23 plus, mm. which is already at the point where you wouldn't really be offering yeah, for sure. work for free. Uh, so there is this thing where people are generalizing about the millennial generation. I'm like, actually, like the generation that's in high school and uni now is Gen Z. Yeah, which, that's not millennials. Not that Gen Z is bad. I love Gen Z, but, you know, just get the, the, the lingo right first. Um, the other problem was that in the last 10 years, we actually had a change in law as well. So it was actually, it's basically become illegal to just hire someone as a free intern and get them mm. to do all of this work and create all this value for your business. The only way you can hire someone as a free intern is if you're making sure that you're teaching them. So it really is more of a mentoring. A win-win, which a win-win. is what we were talking about. You're both getting That's value. That's what we're talking about, exactly. So, uh, and the other issue, and this was the thing that sparked off a lot of um, controversy as well, was just that there are a lot of young people who are in situations where they can't necessarily afford to do that. You know, they might be responsible for looking after their siblings or exactly, their parents yeah. or, you know, in, in areas where you just, you, you can't, you have to earn a living, you know, mm. you might be responsible for rent and all of those kinds Especially of things. Especially in Sydney. It, so it's, you know, I, I want to be careful in saying, you know, just go and do stuff for free, but... Uh, I think that if you're in a position to do that, that can be a way to do it. But if you're not in a position to do that, there are still lots of things that you can do. So um, again, like even if it's volunteering a little bit while you're working, you could do that. Uh, The other thing is like if you're part of like a community group, like you're part of a church or you're part of um, you've done something that people have known you for a long time and over the course of your life you've volunteered like that's experience mm. if you've done stuff at school or you did peer support or there's there's a lot of things that you can leverage what you need to look at is what what is this person really after what are they really looking for and if you can communicate that drive like you were saying even if you can't afford to do work for free there is so much you can do just by leveraging your drive and also being curious about other people and networking. So I don't want people to feel like, oh, if I don't, I'm not in a position to do stuff for free, then I can't do this. There is still a lot you can do. Yeah. Well, you could even say, hey, look, I I really want to work for you for free, but I just can't afford it. Like I only need $200 a week or $300 a week. And that that might be like, yeah, that's fine. Like we can afford, we can afford to do that quite comfortably because we know, because you're clearly driven so we want to have we want to have you come work from us exactly exactly so obviously it might not be as easy as that and you've got to get creative but yeah i like the point you make of you know we're not all in the same situation so it's easy for us to sit here and say just work for free <laughs> because that's the opportunity we had but someone who's got to look after their siblings or maybe divorced parents whatever it is might not have that luxury that's right and i think you know we were talking about before this show we were talking about sort of um, statistics and numbers games right so and I think you mentioned a little bit as we were having this chat that like if you do that a few times the chances go go up and this is for everything so I do this in my business as well where I'm going okay so if I need a new client uh, I need to start having some conversations I'm not going to expect that the first conversation I have is going to land me a client sometimes yeah. it does by chance great but I might have to have 20 conversations 40 conversations or more to get that client it's the same with a job or any opportunity just because the first person says no doesn't mean that yeah and like it. stuff like kevin hart apparently pitched like 400 times before he got his breakthrough yeah it's like all we see is his breakthrough we don't see the 400 pitches same with martin luther king mm-hmm. we, he, we know about his big speech he did that speech thousands of times for years before he got to do it in front of fifty thousand people like in the we only see you know people have made it and when they've made it but yeah exactly 100 percent agree 